So we'll talk about brain tumors, but um, before we talk about how you know you have a brain tumor or how you might suspect you have a brain tumor, just for a, a frame of reference, brain tumors are considered in one of three categories. Either they are tumors that came from someplace else in the body to the brain, that's called a metastatic tumor, or they are tumors that grow up in the head and push on the brain but don't actually invade the brain. These are called extraaxial tumors, and examples of those type of tumors would be meningiomas, acoustic neuromas, pituitary tumors. They're in the head, but they're not really brain tumors per se. The real brain tumors are tumors that begin in the brain, and these are called primary brain tumors, and most of them are called gliomas. They arise from the supporting elements of the brain as opposed to the neurons of the brain because the brain really has two types of cells, neurons and supporting elements. The supporting elements by far are more numerous than the neurons, but uh, they're both very, very important. So there are a variety of tumors that begin with the supporting elements depending on which type of elements it is. So we have astrocytomas, we have ependymomas, we have oligodendrogliomas, etc., etc., etc. What they all have in common is, number one, they're all within the brain itself, and number two, uh, they are graded, one, two, three, and four, with four being a very aggressive tumor and one being a very benign tumor. So just because you have a brain tumor, even if it is a primary brain tumor, it's not a kiss of death, it's not a a death sentence, it's nothing, it's just something that has to be dealt with. Now, having said all that, we're going to talk about a very malignant type of brain tumor today, a very aggressive type of brain tumor, which is the grade 4 glioma, otherwise called a glioblastoma. This is the kind of tumor that Ted Kennedy has and that so many other people have had. The prognosis with a glioma is very, very serious. Not too many people live beyond two years. Uh, new treatments are expanding that uh, longevity to maybe three years or four years. And, and for some people, they live 20, 30 years. That's rare, but it happens. And uh, we now feel that the major treatments for a malignant or aggressive glioma would be surgical debulking, if possible. And that whether, whether it's possible or not depends on its location. So if it's in a silent area of the brain, then it's fairly easy to remove. If it's in a very difficult or eloquent area of the brain, then sometimes the most we can do is a biopsy. So the, the surgery is to remove as much tumor as possible or at least establish a diagnosis. Then radiation therapy, and again, we're talking about two types of radiation therapy. We're talking about conventional fractionated radiation therapy, which means a treatment every day of the week for five or six weeks. And we're talking about focused radiation therapy, uh, which could be something like stereotactic radiosurgery, or it could be IMRT. At any rate, the idea here is to confine the radiation more closely to the tumor. The conventional fractionated covers a much larger area, hoping to get those feelers or tentacles of the tumor which extend into the normal brain and which cause the recurrence of the tumor and result in the very limited life expectancy in many cases. And then we have chemotherapy. And there are a variety of chemotherapies always being tested. What that really means is that no one of them is perfect. But the most popular one right now is Temidar. And recently an article came out showing the efficacy of Temidar over most of the other chemotherapeutic agents. So right now I would say that Temidar or Temozolomide is considered the number one chemo for malignant brain tumors. If you fail the Temidar, then other types of chemotherapy can be tried, but Temidar is really the, the bottom line. 